So whether you are opening a business that needs in-store technology or looking for a full service IT staff at a fraction of the cost, Maven IT is a company you may want to contact and look into. And to talk more about this, Aaron McCarthy, he's the president, and Charlie Aldis, he is the executive vice president for sales and marketing. Great to have you both with us here on the Oakland County Megacast. Good morning, Good morning. Bonnie. How are you? So I know you two are in two separate locations. So I, I will say, I think one thing that has come out of the pandemic, everyone has realized IT people are superheroes. Charlie uh, or Aaron, let's go ahead and start with you. Tell us about Maven IT and, and the company and how it got started. Yeah, so Maven IT is a full service technology provider uh, nationwide. Obviously, we are based in Metro Detroit, always have been. Um, and I formed the company a few years back uh, because I saw a gap in uh, and support for these small and medium businesses. You, you know, if you're a large business, you have on-site staff, you know, things go as predicted. You hire your staff, they take care of your technology needs, you know, phones, computers, door access, all these things are running your network and everything, you know, goes as planned. But what I saw was there are smaller companies out there, small, medium businesses primarily, that they don't have access to those resources. and. You know, just obviously seeing that, I said, well, there's obviously an opportunity here to provide those companies with the level of support that they really need. So hence, here we are with Maven IT. Um, and I'd been working with Charlie at a previous company and started the business myself for about a year or so. We crossed paths again with Charlie uh, and we had that working relationship um, and brought him in to essentially help us move it to the next level after proving out that yes, this theory uh, does work and you know we can help out these small medium businesses they are responding favorably they do like the service um so brought charlie in to uh, help bolster those sales and really uh, get it moving and i can kind of let charlie speak to that a little bit as well yeah in fact charlie because in the middle of the pandemic i think these company owners are realizing how vital solid it is that they need it in order to operate during this pandemic. So how are sales right now for your company? Sales are great. We actually had a phenomenal 2020. Um, we tripled revenue from the previous year and you know, we're a startup, so we better be growing, but uh, though that growth was beyond our expectations and we're really happy with that. And we have plans to more than double for uh, 2021 as well, so. And so with that, what is the most in-demand service that some of these smaller companies need right now? Uh, I would say that data security is the big, the big thing right now, and that comes, you know, with us, that comes in a lot of ways. Um, you know, we do a lot of remote monitoring and management of people's PCs, uh, things like firewalls and you know, um, backup and things like that. You know, there's been a lot of news lately. There's always news about some sort of breach, something like that. So we, data security has been a big revenue generator for us, <clears throat> which always leads to something else as well. And unfortunately, small and medium businesses are largely becoming more and more of a target uh, because the hackers have figured out that they don't have the resources the big companies have and ransomware in particular has become a major issue and uh, so we have been doing our part to make sure that doesn't happen to our customers and when you say a ransomware what exactly is that uh you know aaron's more of a technical guy but i can give you the uh i can give you the layman's version of it so a hacker gets into your network and they encrypt your data and aaron make sure i do this right here um they encrypt your, they encrypt your data and make it so you cannot use your data um, and then they tell you, give us 20, 30, 40, 50 thousand dollars, whatever, to get your data back. Um, and some people pay it, you know. And 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 if you don't, company can literally be out of operation until they find a way to get it back, whether through backups and things like that. It's it's a horrible thing, um, you know. But you know, hackers are smart, and they find more and more ways to make money. And um, it really has been on the increase lately. And with that era, I mean, we've even seen Wall Lake Consolidated Schools, they become the victim of this as well. But when you have some of these smaller companies and you have one, two, three, or even 10, 15 employees, and especially for the companies right now that are on the downswing due to the pandemic, 
how do you get them to realize that they need to invest in IT? Because sometimes when you guys talk, it comes out as like a foreign language to us regular people. Absolutely. Yeah, no, it's common. And, you know, when I from the company, I wanted to make sure that when we speak to customers, we speak to them in a language that they understand. We don't want to get too nerdy on you. Of course, you know, if you are that customer that loves the tech speak, we'll go all day. But when we come in and assess what's going on, we talk to you in non-technical terms, which is very important so that you can comprehend, you understand, you know, we're not just coming in and saying, hey, pay us this amount of money to get these services and have no idea what you're paying for. We go through everything. So to bring somebody on board, really, you know, usually there's a catalyst, right? So, you know, I'll give an example. We had a, a company that had a, a breach on their email um, and they were going through and you know, there was an office administrator that uh, her email had been compromised, send an email from her uh, her email account in her, even her tone that she uses in her emails to one of the partners. Partner took the email, it was about a payroll bank change. Took the email, got printed out the form, sent it back, didn't realize that, you know, he wasn't just sending it to her, somebody had compromised her email. That person got that form, was able to hack into his bank account and then, you know, uh, extract money. So, you know, they approached us about this. And of course, email is one of the specialty areas that we're in, uh, went into their Office 365, turned on all the security switches, do the monitoring, you know, that type of thing. So really we want businesses to focus on what they're good at, you know, whatever their, their core business is, we can sit in the background, monitor your IT. And now when, that, uh, when anything happens to the email, we get a notification, we vet it, we go back to the customer, say, hey, was this you? Were you, you know, in Las Vegas over the weekend looking at your email, you know, from a different IP address? I don't know, you know, no, I was not. We know that's faulty. We'll block that. We'll make sure that you can't be compromised. But it's just having somebody on the backside who can monitor that, who knows the notifications that need to be handled, the ones that don't, we can make it so it's nice and smooth and so you're not at risk and you don't have these spoofs happening, you know, this ransomware, these uh, impersonations going on. And Aaron, some of these scammers are getting so good and so sophisticated at trying to get other people's money. If someone does fall victim, what are the chances of getting that money back? Yeah, so that really depends on how they take that money out. You know, if it's on a credit card, obviously you have a much better uh, chance of getting your money. Uh, there are some, and, and I don't know all the, the exact uh, pieces, but I know your bank will also, if it's a debit card or if it's, you know, ACH, I know there are some financial protections there, but you will be out, you know, some amount of money. There's some limit there. And I apologize, I don't know what it is, but you will be out some money. So, you know, it is, they're very sophisticated. I was very surprised to see the small business come to us and say they had been compromised. It was, you know, but it just goes to show you that it's not the big companies only, it is the small ones uh, that can also be compromised. So Charlie, you had mentioned that uh, more and more smaller and medium-sized businesses are being targeted. When do they know it's time to hire an IT specialist? Uh, well, unfortunately, they usually don't, like Aaron said, they usually don't do it until something happens. Um, but yeah, I would answer the question, the time to do it is before something happens, obviously. And, you know, that's what we try to promote with, with, with our base and with our market. Um, you know, one catalyst, I think that is, you know, one thing that's really interesting lately with the work from home trend because of the pandemic, that was a uh, major issue that really exposed a lot more small, medium sized businesses because um, people work from home don't have the same protections that you do at your office. You're not behind the firewall, for instance, you know, you're just behind the local internet service company's router, which is the same router everyone has. And criminals, you know, hackers are criminals and criminals tend to want to, you know, take the easy way. And, you know, it's, it's like having an unlocked car in a parking lot. They're going to walk through a, a parking lot and look for what doors are open instead of having to break into one. That's kind of how we look at it as well. You want to build a bigger wall than your neighbor. You know, so they unfortunately go to your neighbor instead of you. And that's, that's what we try to promote. So um, there are a lot of, you know, cost effective ways of doing that that really can reduce the probability of this happening to you. And that's what we've been trying to take care of. And so with that, the, the work from home, are there even some tips that regular individuals can utilize right now? All right, I'm gonna let you take that one. Yeah, no, there's a lot of tips, right? Uh, work from home and, you know, and I think they also apply at the office, but even more so when work from home. I mean, 
first thing is really, you know, what type of user are you? You know, are you an executive user? Are you a, a frontline worker user? You know, what type of data do you have access to? And, you know, are you a target? But I think, you know, once you make that assessment, we can determine, okay, does it make sense to put a firewall at your home to protect your data? We have some companies that they do that for their executive users. We put firewalls in their home so they have the same protection as if they were in the office. But really, you know, for every user, the biggest tip I would uh, say is that when you're browsing your email, if you didn't, if you have an email that comes into your inbox and you were not expecting it, do not click it. Even if it's from somebody that you know, like, and trust, uh, you know, like I just gave an earlier example, email accounts are being hacked, you know, left and right. And it looks like it's coming or it in some cases is coming from that user that you're used to doing business with. And, but the ask will be a little bit off, you know, is there an invoice that you're not expecting and they want you to open this invoice to take a look at it. And, you know, when you do that, you could potentially be, you know, putting yourself at risk. So I would say the biggest thing for any user is don't click on any emails that you're not expecting, even if it's from somebody you know and trust. So Aaron, uh, with that, what are the chances of some of these scammers actually getting caught and prosecuted? Because this seems to have been going on for so long, but of course with the pandemic, it is being exposed and exploited so much more now than ever before. Yeah. Something's gotta be done to catch these people. Yeah, no, 100% agree. And that's where the, the really hard part of the equation comes in. Like I was telling you with the other customer that came to us uh, with the email hack that they had, uh, you know, that money that was extracted from the bank account, you know, we have the IP address of where that hacker came from. But the, the thing is, these guys are sophisticated. They're not, you know, this isn't their first you know time going around doing this. They hide their IP addresses. So it's, you know, it's a uh, behind a shroud essentially, but multiple shrouds, not just one. So to find that uh, end user that caused that, uh, that hack is very, very difficult and takes a lot of forensics and really in detail forensics. I wouldn't say it's impossible, but it is very difficult, very difficult, excuse me. And, you know, depending on the amount of money, you know, law enforcement may not take that forward. You know, you have to pursue them and it's not easy. Another piece of that is a lot of these hackers are from outside of the United States. So that adds that extra layer of security. What a nightmare. Oh my gosh. Hey, Charlie, if I could uh, throw the conversation back over to you for just a second here. I know that you said uh, really your company is, you know, specializing in the small and medium size companies. And with that, uh, what types of services and do you have different levels of services for some of these uh, companies to try to look into? Because if they're experiencing a downturn right now, it could be hard for them to say, hey, I need to shell out more money for some of these IT services. Yeah, we have different different levels. I look at it more as uh, different product lines. Um, you know, we have a very broad portfolio. So, we, you know, the way we describe it is we provide, we can provide services for anything that touches your network and the network itself. So it can be as basic as, you know, brokering your internet service. Um, you know, on one end of the spectrum, the other end of the spectrum is, is providing the technology for everything that touches your network. And that means PCs, email, uh, Wi-Fi, security cameras, door access systems, uh, phones, um, uh, we, uh, firewalls, all the data security. Uh, components, all of those things. And so we have different packages uh, that try to meet the needs of the different needs of the different customers. So we can, and we also provide multi product discounts. So if a customer goes to us for multiple products, they're going to save more over time. Um, the good thing is most of the things we provide, people are going to need, you know, so you, you, you generally have to have it, you're buying it from somebody. Uh, and we really try to push the idea of buy it from one provider. You know, so there's a, you know, one throat to choke, which I don't really like the, uh, you know, like, like the, the phrase, but it, 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 it makes sense that you only have one place to call if something goes wrong instead of having to manage a bunch of different providers. Um, and that's really our value proposition. Good advice. Good advice, too. I, hey, Aaron, uh, how can people find you if they are interested in trying to uh, learn more about the services? Yeah, absolutely. They can uh, reach us uh, on our website, of course, maveninc.com, and that's M-A-V-E-N, itinc.com. As well, uh, feel free to call us, 833-MAVEN-IT. 
I, I will say your logo is really cool. It almost looks like uh, it belongs to like a superhero. Thank you. <laughs> That's I love great. It. I love it. Well, and you and your staff, you really are superheroes right now. I think so many people are realizing in the midst of the pandemic just how important IT and technology is to help get us through this time. So uh, thank you both of you for your time with us here on the Oakland County Megacast. Thank, thank you. you. I appreciate it.